We're now thinking, finally, oh, I've been waiting for so long and I'm really excited about it. About solving this problem of area by using these things called integrals, right? Integrals are about area. But as so often happens, when you develop a tool, right, if it's um if it's like a more sophisticated thing, right? Like we're not just using area formulas and so on. We're using calculus, we're anti-differentiating, we're using the primitive function to find an area. What you often discover is that the tool is more powerful than you realized it was, that it actually can do more than you originally devised. Now that's both a good and a bad thing. You have to be careful with it, right? It's a little bit like, you know, saying, oh, I need to, um, I need to slice up some fruit. And then you invent something called a chainsaw. And you're like, well, this is very good at slicing up fruit. But you can also slice off your leg, okay? So integration, using calculus, using primitive functions, is super powerful. It's incredibly powerful. It sets us loose from just triangles and rectangles and circles and so on. But it's, it's dangerous. Because it can do so much more, you've got to be careful with it. So to give you an example of this, let's have a look at this simple function, okay? Now, if I wanted to determine... And uh, let's just go with some simple numbers here. If I wanted to determine the area between here, this is negative 1, and here, which is positive 1, okay? How would I write if this was, say, you know, something simple like y equals x? How would I write the integral that tells me, that defines this area? I'll give you a hint. It starts, good morning. With this, with our S for sum, yeah. And then one in the top, minus one in the bottom. Very good. So one here, minus one there, and I read that, I, even though it's like top to bottom seems natural, right? The values are actually in order from bottom to top, because you're going from small numbers to large numbers, right? Usually. So I read this as from negative one to mm -hmm. one. Okay. What's the function that I'm integrating? X to It's x. And then I've got my dx there, which means with respect to x, that corresponds to that little width that we always have when we're integrating, okay? Now, when I have a look at this, I think, well, this is not complicated, okay? I just need to know what the primitive of x is. And you're starting to, you've done this a few times now, right? So what's the function that you differentiate to leave you with x? x squared on 2. x squared on 2, very good. The power, it goes up and then you divide, okay? But I need to evaluate that at its beginning and its end, right? So that's why I put the square box around there, and I say from negative one to one. Just gonna pause for a second. A uh, bit of language here to, uh, so that we don't have to keep on saying, you know, where it came from, premium, etc. That thing which you're integrating, the thing you're integrating, it has a special name, it's called the integrand. Okay, so I'm going to start using that word now to refer to like what's the thing which is actually being integrated? What's the thing I'm trying to find the area beneath? Okay, Okay. so, so far so good, right? Now I can just evaluate this, right? This means evaluate it at 1 and then take away what happens when you evaluate it at negative 1. No big deal, right? So let's write this out. Here's the substitution. Uh, 1 squared is just 1 and then I'm taking away, well, what's negative 1 squared? Also one. So then you come up with this puzzling result that apparently our area is zero. Now it doesn't look like zero to me, okay? Uh, it looks pretty obviously like it takes up some space, okay? But here's what I mean by this integration using this primitive function, right? As simultaneously more powerful and more dangerous at the same time, right? The area is actually zero. Okay, uh, at least in accordance with what the integral tells us because an integral actually can take account for the fact that this area on the left hand side here is negative. It's beneath the axis. Now that's weird, right? Because area is meant to be a measurement thing. So actually if I wanted to find, tell me how much space this blue thing takes up, I actually have not answered the question, right? What I've evaluated is the integral. But the integral is just a tool to find the area. It actually can do other things as well, like take into account negatives, okay? And this is actually really, really useful, because if you remember, if you remember that tra travel graph that I was talking about before, okay? I said, you know, from here to here, and I said, okay, what I need to know is like where you start and where you end, and then that corresponds to, down here, the area under a curve. Do you remember that? 
Okay. Now here's the thing. If I have down the bottom, right, if I had not this kind of really boring speed time graph, right, if I had a graph a bit more like this, like say, okay. Now if I were comparing between the same boundaries, I think I said one and three. Okay, if I were comparing, all right, so let's say one there and three there. Okay, so this is a speed time graph. When you have a look at this, right, it's actually not a speed time graph at all because some of the speed, have a look at, like what's happening at hour one, right? Some of the speed is negative. negative. Now, in fact, speed, just like length and area, is just a it's just a measurement, so it can only be positive. In fact, this introduces, and I'm sort of teasing what we're going to look at next year under motion. This is actually a velocity, and it's facing in a different direction. Okay, so this is a little bit like okay, uh, you know, I was heading south at some point, and then I slowed down, and then I started heading north at some point. Now if I do that, good morning, in exact opposites, right, exact opposites, if those areas are different, uh, sorry, if those areas are the same, then essentially what's going to happen is, I'm going to, well let's see, I, I start somewhere, remember it's a primitive, and it's any of the primitives, it doesn't matter which one, so I can start anywhere I like. I head south for some amount of time, right, I stop, so that's a stationary point up here, and then I start heading north at a certain time, for the same amount of time, the same speed. What distance have I traveled? Zero. Now, the, the total difference, right, is zero. I end up exactly back where I started. In other words, this zero, right, the effective distance that I've traveled, well, it cancels out, right? Yes. Um, if this, it is actually if the canceling zeros works for, like, functions, does it work if you have a relation? Relations are a bit trickier because when we get to this point here and you evaluate, it's like, well, if I have circle, for instance, it's like, well, when you take negative one, it's like, well, am I, not negative one, that's a bad example. Negative a half, it's like, is it this value or is it this value? So you can't actually evaluate, like this has to be a function. It can't be a relation, because otherwise it's like, well, which one do you want? You have to pick a case, okay? All right, so therefore, a couple of things to note, right? The first thing is, integrals that use the primitive function, right? they take into account negatives, right? An area under the axis registers as negative, which is not that difficult to confirm if, for instance, I just wanted to work out this part on the left, right? How would I work out just that part over there? Uh, yeah, I'd start at negative one and I'd end at zero, right? And I'd still keep going. I'd go x squared, sorry, x. I'm integrating already. x dx, right? There's the integrand there. My primitive is x squared on two, right? From negative one to zero, okay. Careful, careful. How do I evaluate this? What's the f of b? What's the f of a? Zero on two. Is minus zero on two take away one. one on two. There's the negative area. Area beneath the axis is probably a better way to say it. Okay. So you can see just by crunching the numbers, right? Integrals are more powerful than just like, oh, tell me what the areas of these triangles are. Okay. If the question was, tell me the actual area. You can't just simply evaluate this because you'll get out something which is meaningless. This area is not actually zero, okay? How would I do it? Absolutely. Okay, so I've got a couple of choices, right? Uh, and there's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna unpack these all formally later, but just for this particular example, right? I could say this area over here being beneath the axis, I'll label it, and you might like to label it as well, okay? I'm going to call this area one. Okay, name that area one. Good morning. And I'll call this one area two. Okay, I'm giving them different names because I'm treating them separately. One's negative and one's positive, so I have to deal with them in different ways. Right? I would say area one is not the integral from negative one to zero. In fact, it is negative the integral from negative one to zero. Right? Because I can see it's beneath the axis. If what I want is the actual area, then I have to slap a minus sign on the front, okay? And then everything proceeds as it did before. I'm still gonna get the same number out. So it's negative, negative a half. And so that triangle there has the area of a half, right? I can say in the same way, well, area two, that's above the axis. No problems, right? So if you're above the axis, then that area and the integral, according to the primitive, are exactly the same thing, right? They're identical. So I don't have to apply any minus signs to the front. I just go from zero to one, right? And then in exactly the same way, I'm gonna get a half. 
So then the total area, the total area is actually equal to, well, one plus the other. And that looks a little more, you know, consonant with the actual area that I draw. It's a positive value after all, okay? 